Over Christmas and New Year's of 1996 to 97, the news cycle was gripped by an unfolding drama taking place thousands of miles off Australia in the lonely Southern Ocean. The 1996-97 Vendée Globe single-handed round-the-world yacht race was in full swing. It would be a treacherous and deadly contest, but out of the jaws of tragedy, miracle rescues occurred. The first sign of trouble came on Christmas Day 1986, when competitor Raphael Dinelli capsized twice, halfway between Australia and South Africa, out of reach of either country's immediate rescue capability. Activating his distress beacon, the only chance for his safe return lay with fellow competitor Pete Goss, who upon hearing of his predicament, battled for two days against mountainous seas to get to Denali's last known position. In the meantime, an Australian Navy aircraft had dropped a life raft, and when Goss arrived, he was able to get Denali on board, the two men arriving in Tasmania ten days later. Goss continued on, eventually finishing fifth in the race. In the few days following the new year, the race had been struck by savage weather. Within hours of each other on the 5th of January 1997, over 1,000 miles off the Australian coast, two other yachtsmen found themselves in serious trouble, trying to survive 100 mile an hour winds and huge seas. The first to activate his distress beacon was Tony Bullimore. His boat, Exide Challenger, rolled and suffered a snapped keel. Without panicking, he was initially able to seek refuge inside, but when the craft began taking on water, he was forced into an air pocket inside the hull. Thierry Dubois's boat was also rolled, resulting in a mast that was broken in three places. Ingeniously, he managed to jury-rig a replacement before the boat was rolled again. This time, there was no option. He made a distress call and headed for his life raft, only for its tether to snap, leaving him hooked to the rudder of his upturned boat. With the nearest ship three days sailing away, the Australian Navy swung into action. A Navy aircraft was able to locate both the wrecks, less than ten miles from each other. A life raft was dropped to Dubois, but the prognosis for Bullymore looked grim. With the boat upturned, and seemingly full of water, it was thought certain that the Briton was lost. On the 9th of January, Dubois was rescued by a helicopter from the Australian frigate Adelaide. The same vessel then sailed to the wreck of Bullymore's boat, after dispatching a rigid inflatable craft over to it and knocking on the hull. They were amazed to see Bullymore swim out from under the stricken yacht. He later recounted his tale, including surviving on a chocolate bar while he awaited rescue. The race would not be all triumphant deliverance, though. Around the 7th of January, notable Canadian sailor Jerry Roofs, who had steered his boat Group LG2 to second place in the standings, disappeared after his positioning system ceased to transmit. Group LG2 was found on the coast of Chile in July of that year. Roofs was never seen again. The rescue of Dubois and Bullymore became a huge story in the media, particularly Bullymore, who'd been given up for dead. Praise was rightly heaped on the Australian Navy. However, the media tended to focus more on the later events, somewhat eclipsing the miraculous rescue of Dinelli by Goss, although Goss was deservedly recognised by the French authorities for saving Frenchman Dinelli, receiving the Legion of Honour, for actions that were nothing short of heroic. Along with the tributes came questions and controversy about how a fatality and several near catastrophes could have happened. World Sailing, the governing body of the sport, were determined that action should be taken. The rules governing the class of yacht taking part in such races were modified, together with a requirement for rollover tests and a limiting of the size of the boat's beam. The result was the new Emoka class boat. 
The characters in this remarkable drama continued to sail in the years that followed. Goss and Donnelly even sailed together in 1997. In the two-person transatlantic race, Transat Jacques Vabre, winning their class. Dubois attempted the globe again in 2000, but was forced to retire in New Zealand due to electrical issues. He later devoted himself to the construction of a schooner, which he sailed personally and with clients in the Arctic Sea. Bullymore featured in a 2000 BBC documentary, Sailing the Atlantic with comedian Lenny Henry. Combining his love of the sea with business interests, he also made sailing record attempts. He died of cancer in 2018, at the age of 79. The story of the Vendée Globe of 1996-97 reignited all the old arguments about the safety of such extreme pursuits and whether those involved were selfish consumers of vast public and personal resources if they required rescue. But it also reminded us of the unbelievable heroism and the indomitable will to survive which humans can possess.